What's up everybody? Today we are going to be covering a new container for the RStack called Maintainer. This is a really interesting solution for the janitorial work that happens within all of our media collections. What ends up happening for all of us is we have media within our media collections that ends up not being washed, just sits around and does nothing, just taking up space. And when that kind of happens, we lose the ability to keep track of just the sheer amount of stuff that we have and things start getting lost and we don't know what we're watching and what we're not watching. So Maintainer exists to fix that problem and as well as a few other problems that have been identified with just keeping media. We see here a select grouping of features that are available on Maintainer, things like collection management, make collections from a specific set of rules defined by us to talk about the Plex collections that we have at our home screen, the integration with things like Overseer and the R Suite as well. There's a countdown timer here before things are deleted. There is the ability to remove media from disks. There is the ability to look at our Plex library contents. If this sounds like the solution that you're looking for, for the amount of media you have that you're just not watching that's taking up space, let's go ahead and look at the deployment of Maintainer. Here we are on my TrueNOS instance that I use for testing and the creation of these videos. The first thing I'm gonna to wanna to do is go ahead and create data sets for Maintainer. So I'm in my tank configs directory here, and I've already made one for Maintainer using the apps preset, which is why the permissions look like this. I've already done videos where I added data sets using the apps preset permission. It's pretty straightforward. I'm not gonna cover it again. Jumping over to Dockage, I went ahead and deployed a container already using this compose.yaml file right here. You can jump over to the wiki to find that. Go ahead and navigate to media management and then scroll down until you get to torrent management and you'll see the new tab here for maintainer. Go ahead and click that. You'll see the deploy maintainer section right here it has the Docker compose I used and just copied and pasted it directly into Dockage. If you have custom pool names that are not called tank, go ahead and change that there. My pool is named tank and for best practices, it's easiest like this. Go ahead and modify your volume path, but everything else is fine. Just keep that the same. Go ahead and click deploy. Let's go ahead and jump into the container for the first time. This is what we're gonna see the first time we jump into it. So the first thing we wanna do is authenticate to load our Plex server. Let's go ahead and name it here. I'm just gonna call this server Plex. My host name IP is 1099.0.191 and it is running on the standard port of 32400. Let's go ahead and authenticate. After you click the authenticate button, there'll be a quick pop-up that makes sure you can sign into your Plex. Go ahead and just sign in with your username and password like usual. And when you have successfully authenticated, you will come back to this screen and you'll see here my authenticated button has gone to this kind of orange color and I am indeed authenticated. Let's go ahead and save changes just like that. Now that that's done, we're gonna go ahead and integrate some more apps in our suite. So we have the option to do Overseer or Jelly Seer, depending on which one you have. Again, just punch in your hostname IP, your port and your API key. We're gonna to wanna to do the same thing for Radar and Sonar here in order for Maintainer to have the ability to go ahead and add or remove media. So to do Sonar, for example, it'd be very simple. In this case, my server name would be Sonar. My host name IP would be 1099, like that. My port for Sonar is 8989. I don't need a base URL, and I would go ahead and just paste my API key here and hit test and save changes. So we can see here I successfully connected to Sonar, and I can go ahead and save changes, and here's my Sonar server. Again, same thing for Radar. It's not gonna be any more complicated than that. If I want to set up notifications, I can add an agent here, which is really cool. I just give it a name. The agent is, there's some pretty good options here. You can do basic email. They have Discord, which is what most of you guys are probably going to use. But again, I'm a Gotify kind of guy. So I would go ahead and use Gotify, enter my URL and the token that it gives me. And then I have the option here of what types of notifications I would like to get. Everything from media added to media removed, things that are about to happen in media, things that have happened in media. If there's been any kind of failures, whether it be rule handling or collection handling. So that's great. And I love the idea that this can notify me of things that are going on. We can go ahead and see our logs here if there's anything going on. We also have jobs going on and the about section right here. Now that we have our settings configured so we can talk to our other containers, let's go ahead and jump into the rules section. And this is what makes maintainer so powerful. It's its ability to add rules. So let's go ahead and add a new rule for an example. I'm gonna call this test rule, just like that. I'm gonna go ahead and check my TV shows library. Media type is shows. I can do shows, seasons, or episodes. This is actually pretty cool. So we can go ahead and just do whole shows. I'm gonna pick the Sonar server I've already added. And then we have options here to delete entire shows, unmonitor, unmonitor, and delete, unmonitor and show, keep files, and do nothing. So I'm gonna say delete entire show, and it's gonna say take this action after 30 days. So this is a pretty cool thing that we can do here. And we can see this is some other options within this rule. It's active right now. It's gonna show the collection on the Plex library recommended screen. It's gonna show on home. It's gonna add list exclusions, use rules. And I'm not gonna do a custom collection here, but here's the way the rule needs to work depending on how I'm gonna add this rule. So I'm gonna go ahead and click community. 
And this is a really powerful feature of the maintainer. This gives me the option to look at people who already use some of these community scripts. And you can see here it's organized by the most karma. So I can keep going over and over and over and over and over. So if some of these are not so good. That's why I have mine. Just go all the way back to the beginning and look at them with the most karma. This is a show that was requested in Overseer. No episode watched in the last 60 days or everything has been watched by the requester. That's a great rule. Basically, this rule says that somebody requested this media, it was added, but they haven't watched it in the last two months, so they're probably not interested, or they've watched everything and it's not going to be needed. So let's go ahead and do this and let's import this rule. And here's all the rules, section one, section two, section two. Look at all this cool stuff that they did. Now, again, you can do this by hand, but this is pretty great because it's already built in everything that I need. So I'm going to go ahead and save this. Now, here is my new test rule, and it shows me that it's active for TV shows and there's seven rules here. And now we know what we can do. We can go ahead and run those rules against my flex library in the event that I wanted to run that right now. Now that we have a rule built, you'll see that now we have something in collections as well. So these are the automatic collections that are gonna go on within maintainer. And you can see here's my test rule. It brings me and shows me exactly what would happen in the event that there was media here. So. I don't have any media in my Plex server right now, so this is just a demonstration. If I did have media, you would see a lot of populated information here. So when I go back out to collections, for example, I can just go ahead and click handle collections. And if there was items in here, you'd see this number and you can see it started handling the collections. We have some notifications going on here that there's things going on in the background. Obviously, that's not going to do anything because there's nothing in my Plex library, but your Plex library, which is probably much more filled than mine, is going to go ahead and start running these rules and running these collections to clean up all the things that it is to told to clean up, which is in this case, any show that's been sitting around for 60 days and no one's watched or somebody's watched everything that they requested from that show. In the event you guys need to see more configuration options, you can go ahead and jump into the documentation. And I got there directly through the wiki. If you're on the wiki, you can go ahead and click the screen bar that says read the official documentation and you can go taken right to this documentation page. You can go ahead and click get started and look at all the installation options here as well as some of the configuration options here. So all this is out here for the documentation. I hope you guys go ahead and read it. I really hope you guys just enjoyed this video. This is a really cool thing if you're using Plex. It only works for Plex right now, so I'm sorry for everybody out there using Jellyfin, but if you are using Plex and you wanna keep your collections small and clean and up to date, this is a great, great tool and it's very well maintained. So if you have any questions about it, please leave them in the video description below. If you wanna have a very complex conversation about it, please jump over in the Discord at Servers at Home. In the event you wanna thank me personally, please buy me a coffee.